The city of Nagoya is located in Aichi Prefecture between Japan's capital city Tokyo and the historical city of Kyoto. This is the home of Nagoya University, which has produced many world-leading academic achievements. Aichi Prefecture is a major center for monozukuri manufacturing. It is number one in Japan in terms of shipment value for manufactured goods, far ahead of the number two and the rest. The trade handled by the port of Nagoya generates most of Japan's trade surplus. Automobiles, aerospace industry components, IT equipment. Many of the products supporting major Japanese brands are produced here. Moreover, Aichi Prefecture produced three of the great feudal lords in Japanese history, Oda Nobunaga, Toyotomi Hideyoshi, and Tokugawa Ieyasu, and many historical buildings remain. The Nagoya Festival is a reminder of the city's rich history. Not to be missed is the procession of the three feudal lords featuring Nobunaga, Hideyoshi, and Ieyasu, accompanied by around 600 participants. Beautiful washoku Japanese-style food items imbued with the seasonal scents are prepared by making the finest use of ingredients. Overseas visitors are recommended to try them. The world-famous sushi is a representative example of washoku. You can casually enjoy it at this Sushi Go Round restaurant. The name of Nagoya University echoed around the world with the announcement of the 2014 Nobel Prize Awards. Isamu Akasaki, Professor Emeritus of Nagoya University, and Hiroshi Amano, Graduate School of Engineering Professor, received the Nobel Prize in Physics for their invention of the blue light-emitting diode. Nagoya University, or NU, has already produced six Nobel laureates in the 21st century. Another notable aspect of NU is its drive towards globalization. It already has bases all over the world, centered around Asia, including Asian Satellite Campuses Institutes, which enable students to acquire a doctor's degree in their home country. NU is making its presence felt more and more worldwide. Nagoya University consists of nine undergraduate and 14 graduate schools. Research institutes involved in national projects and industry university collaborative studies and many other facilities. The Graduate School of International Development, or GSID, pursues the development of human resources who are active in the fields of international development and cooperation. GSID was established in 1991 as one of Japan's first graduate schools dedicated to the study of international development. International development studies addresses issues related to real-life problems global society faces and attempts to inform policy debates concerning these problems. The real-life problems arising in the world include poverty, inequality, environmental degradation, conflicts, migration, bad governance, among other things. Understanding these problems require multidisciplinary perspectives. For example, let us think about the challenges confronting poor people in developing countries. They may not have enough to eat, they may not have access to basic education or health care, they may not have access to finance, or if they have, they may be heavily in debt. They may not have access to legal assistance so that they suffer from multiple levels of injustice. What needs to be done to get them out of poverty? Our graduate school education encourages students to analyze these problems in innovative new ways and to think about what, can, what we can do to solve them. So we welcome students willing to take the challenge with us GSID offers master's and doctoral degree programs. There are five fields of specialization, which include Program in Economic Development Policy and Management, EDP and M. Program in Peace and Governance. Program in Education and Human Resource Development. Program in Inclusive Society and State. Program in Poverty and Social Policy. 
This program structure will enable students to acquire both breadth and depth of understanding on development issues with abilities to work competently in their respective fields as specialists. The academic calendar is divided into spring and fall semesters. Around half of the students at GSID are from overseas, including Asian countries, Europe, North America and Africa. At GSID, most classes are taught in English. In fact, it's possible for students from overseas to acquire degrees entirely in English, all the way through from taking the entrance exam and classes to writing their graduation thesis. If they wish, students can also take classes to study Japanese. There are several kinds of scholarship. Those who are applying for entrance permission under Japanese government must pass the primary screening conducted at the Japanese embassy in their home country. There are also private scholarships, as well as the Asian Development Bank Japan Scholarship Program. There is also a system to exempt either all or half the amount of tuition fees for international students who have excellent academic records but have some difficulty paying the fees. This is the dormitory for international students. There are various types of rooms, including those for one person and those for families. In the vicinity of the dormitory there are many restaurants and on the campus there are canteens and a convenience store so students needn't suffer any problems in their daily life. This is the Education Centre for International Students. Nagoya University has many international undergraduate and graduate students in addition to those at GSID. The Education Centre improves their learning environment and provides all kinds of counselling and consultation services. Graduate students, including research students who have just arrived in Japan, can receive guidance, including help on procedures with government institutions. Either a Japanese or a senior gives a helping hand as a tutor. This is the GSID library, which has a large collection of relevant books and materials published by governments and the World Bank, along with a tremendous variety of statistics. The NU Central Library houses a huge volume of books and academic journals. One of the outstanding features of GSID is its emphasis on practical education. It was the first university to offer overseas fieldwork, OFW, and domestic fieldwork, DFW. Domestic fieldwork, as shown in these photographs, teaches the basic attitudes regarding field surveys and survey methods in environments with different social and cultural backgrounds. It's also possible to participate in an internship connected with international development in Japan. Phnom Penh, Cambodia. Klok Vichet Ratta is aiming to acquire a degree while working for a Cambodian government organization. Enrolled in the Nagoya University Asian Satellite Campuses Institute, she is studying to acquire a degree at a local university, as well as receiving advice on her dissertation via the internet. I am also working as a part-time lecturer in some university in Cambodia. So my uh, knowledge and skill and uh, experience from uh, learning through this program can be shared to my students for the purpose of uh, contributing to uh, human resource development, which uh, help to respond to the sustainable development of the countries. And for my uh, research uh, result can be the uh, policy recommendation for further uh, uh, reform of education in Cambodia. 
The rector of the Royal University of Phnom Penh is an NU graduate who acquired a doctoral degree at GSID. I think GSID, um, uh, what I can say about the field of international development is the best one. It has a pool of qualified professor who has experience in this field outside Japan, either in World Bank, IMF, or JICA, or in any development agencies around the world. And in addition to that, GSID has a lot of foreign students coming to study there with different backgrounds. So apart from getting knowledge from professors, you also can share uh, experience or knowledge of developing worlds with colleagues, with students. Yokohama, Japan. The director of the Food and Agriculture Organization of the United Nations in Japan, the Mbuli Charles Boliko, is another GSID graduate. You also have to unlearn the traditional way in which universities are organized, where people go and specialize in one major, one area. And so this is what could be called a vertical way of looking at university education. And GSID said, no, we have to do it more horizontally. Study something in depth, but at the same time, you have to be more interdisciplinary. You don't specialize in just one thing, but you have to also look at the interdependencies between what you're studying and what others are studying. Because development cannot come from one single area, it will always come from a combination of disciplines. And this is really the right attitude that we got from GSID, which has greatly actually contributed to, to my own uh, career development. GSID is that they are so diverse. They are multinational and also to make friends um, with people from around the world. In GSID, we are able to choose to study or learn what we are really are interested in. So um, each of us, each of students, we can choose and we can really uh, enjoy studying in the thing that we really want to be uh, expertise in. I really want uh, my country to uh, have more um, development, especially in a uh, rural area, because people in rural areas still have uh, many difficulties. For example, education, there are still uh, many uh, problems about the poverty. And I think we have still many, many ways to um, improve their life. So in the future, I'd like to uh, help to improve their um, quality of life. Uh, I brought a lot of information and knowledge back from GSID. And right now, I'm teaching international development exactly what I learned in GSID. I'm teaching students about international development. And a lot of uh, students are interested in this topic in my school. By creating innovative ideas on international development and cooperation studies, GSID is striving to foster future leaders who will contribute to finding solutions to global issues.